Hello everybody, Bill Platt here, and I'd like to tell you why I love short books. Um, it actually probably goes back to my history. Uh, during the 2000s, from about 2001 up to 2010, I wrote a whole lot of articles. And honestly, I probably did about 400 in my own name. I probably did another 600 under pen names promoting my businesses. And I did probably another 4,000 for customers as their favorite ghostwriter. And so I've covered a lot of different material over the years. And, you know, a lot of the material I covered within a lot of those articles, I couldn't do it unless I sat down and read about the topic before I sat down to write. And so I got a wide range of experience with uh, different kinds of different genres. And over the years, I learned to hate two different genres, which I'll never write in again probably for so long as I live, and they are real estate and medicine. Uh, you know, I can have the, I can get the knowledge I need to be able to create medical-based articles for people, but I never felt comfortable doing that because I don't have a medical license. So I really never felt comfortable with that. And to be honest, the stuff I did write, it wasn't that, it wasn't stuff that was, uh, making fantastic claims about uh, a particular medical practice is more a historical background thing or background material but it was never meant as diagnosis or anything like that so with what I did do in the medicine field it was really tame stuff you know it was like um, eat drink and get some good exercise you know that type of thing but over the years, I, I finally decided that uh, I didn't want to do mess anymore. And, because, and the primary reason was people were asking me to get into some of those more diagnostic areas. And I didn't, I didn't feel comfortable doing that at all. So I had to put my foot down and say, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to touch it with a 10-foot pole. Because my, my view on that was if I made a bad recommendation and it killed somebody... I wouldn't be good, right? So I don't dabble in that whatsoever. And um, then the real estate, the biggest problem I had with the real estate is most real estate is local. So I couldn't tell you about Chicago real estate for the life of me. Los Angeles real estate, I don't have a clue. Wouldn't know where to begin. So those are two areas I just never felt comfortable writing. But in the meantime, I've written thousands of articles on dozens literally dozens maybe even hundreds of different genres um, in the nonfiction realm and so when I came to books I, I made the transition to books in 2010 and um, since then I still write a lot of short material um, I've got an email list and I send out emails pretty much every day and uh, then every now and again, I go into I go into my rant mode, which is a lot of fun, and people really enjoy that. But uh, rant modes could be a three thousand word email uh, or a two thousand word email, and then most of my emails anyway are going to be in the five to eight hundred word range. And then I've got my Facebook posts, and I've got several that. Or three, four, five thousand words on Facebook, and then many more that are a thousand words or five hundred words. So over the years, I've done a lot of writing um, in the short form format. And the thing I really like about that is I get to cover a wider range of material doing that. I get to expand my, like, open up my wings and fly. And do things that I thought I would never be able to do in my life. And in the process, I've learned a whole lot about writing. And the big thing for me with the writing, especially in article format, is I need to get, I need to get the reader from the headline to the last word of the article. And that was my primary focus, was that I did not lose the interest of the reader between word one and the 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 end so the end of the article 
And so that was very important to me that I was able to keep people all the way through the article because at the end of the article was a um, sign-off, author sign-off. Uh, Bill Platt is the author of this article. And if you'd like to learn more about his products and services, click here. So that was the format I was running with the articles and then with the uh, email list. Some of them are just straight information and some of them are promoting another product and I'm laying down the background for that particular product before I get to the actual click here to learn more. So there's a lot of information I'm covering here and so the short format works really well for me. And I do Kindle books in short format and that's really a blessing now because Kindle has a section called Kindle Short Reads. And they're wrote down by how many minutes it takes to read a particular book. So the smallest one is 1 to 11 minutes. And I think the next one is like 11 to 25. And then the one after that is 25 to 44. And then 45 to 60. So somewhere in that range. You know, that's not precise. I haven't really studied it that closely. But they break down the books by how long it would take to read that particular book. And I do have several short reads that are under 11 minutes. Uh, I do have several that are 45 minutes. And that helps me really, like I said, expand what I'm able to do. And it allows me to crank out books really fast. And I do enjoy that. Um, and I do, I've got some of them for authors out there. In the short format, I've got a number of others under pen names for a wide range of uh, topics that would be of interest to people who read books. Um, and most of them are the problem, solution oriented nonfiction. So I do have a wide range of materials I still write. And so I've got history books out there, and I've got um, a lot of different history books, actually. Then I've got problem, solution oriented books. and um, all along those lines, and most of them are in the Kindle Short Reads. Now, with the Kindle Short Reads, there's a couple of advantages there, and that is that you get to test out new uh, stories that you want to tell, and even though I'm a nonfiction writer, I consider most of what I do to be storytelling, and but storytelling with a purpose. And so... The purpose is most often to teach somebody something that they want to learn. So that's what a lot of my books are. And then um, uh, with the short reads, not only do I get to cover a wide range of material, but I get to test a lot of things really fast. So if it takes me only a day to write a book, then I can put it up there and I can test my cover and I can test the title and I can test the description and uh, the big thing for me is it gives me more buy buttons. A few years ago I asked Willie Crawford, I said, dude, you seem to be so productive and not only that, you make so much more money than I do and I, I'm just wondering how it is you're able to do that and he said in three words, more buy buttons and he explained it to me that you still have to offer real value to people, but there's different ways you can put more buy buttons into the wild. And what that allows is more, more opportunities for a reader to discover your work. So rather than writing one 50,000 word novel, I can write uh, 20 1,000 word books, or 50 1,000 word books, and for the same word count, so I got 50 books versus one book, and so I got one chance to get discovered by the public, or I got 50 chances to get discovered by the public. And for me, I'm trying to find readers all the time. I'm always looking for new readers, more people who love what I write and love my approach to teaching and so on and so forth. And you know, I do write with a bit of humor from time to time, so people who enjoy my sense of humor. And so 
for me, it's a matter of discovering new audiences and having more ways to earn money from my craft. So with the shorts, I can do, I, I can put more buy buttons out there and that, that's important to me because over the long run, I want to make more money. And I assume that most everybody watching me today wants to make more money. So that's why I like the Kindle Shorts. Now, an interesting thing about that, I said that I do a lot of emails and I do rants from time to time. And um, it's really funny, a different audience uh, when you're doing these things. Um, with the rants, I, I had one that was like 2,500 words. And it was an interesting one. Then uh, I got several emails from people saying, you ought to turn this into a book. So I did, I turned it into a short read. It's a 45 minute short read, um, if I recall right. But I do know the word count in the book. I, I took it from a 2400 word email and trans, transformed it into a 4500 word book. And then I put it up on Amazon. And it got a lot of attention. And the thing that I find so amazing about it is my people loved it in my newsletter or on my mailing list when it's 2,500 words and when I expanded it out to 4,500 words people on Amazon complained that it wasn't long enough. So it's two different uh, audiences completely, you know. So the people who receive my email, they're happy with 2,500 words because it offers incredible value to them. And then when I expand it out a little bit and offer it in Amazon, as a 4,500 word book, some people think I don't offer enough value. Can't win for losing, can you? Right? So I typically don't worry about those negative reviews like that. And somebody mentioned here on YouTube that I shouldn't have to go into a lot of detail about um, what my background is because she feels that most people on my list already know me and know my background already and um, if anybody doubted me, they could Google me, which is true, they could. But I also feel that most people finding me on YouTube aren't on my mailing list. Most of the new readers, right? Uh, new people who are uh, following what I have to say. So I'm talking to new audiences here, and um, a lot of those folks... If you go Google, you're going to find a lot of stuff with my name on it. Uh, over the years, like I said, I've written over 400 articles. I've got uh, hundreds, probably thousands of posts on Facebook. I've got thousands of emails out there that are available on the AWeb archives and the Get Response archives. So there's a lot of material out there, and you can find and discover and learn more about me. And you can discover some of my websites. i got way too many. And um, I've got dozens of training products out there for writers. And so people can discover those as well. And the thing about it is with the shorts, now a lot of my products, when I'm doing a training product, most of those are produced in PDF format, same as a book. It's just a different delivery mechanism. I'm delivering it from my own website instead of from Amazon particularly. Um, the, uh, with a lot of those, we're looking at 40 to 75 pages as a general rule if I'm doing a product. Um, and those are delivered in PDF format, like I said. And a lot of them need to be transferred over and put over on Amazon. I haven't done that yet, but I will eventually. And I do have people asking who had purchased the PDF are asking me to go ahead and get it up on Amazon under CreateSpace so they can buy a physical copy of the book as well. So I've got a lot of that behind me as well. Um, the thing is, then I've got other products that are video, video products, video training. So... And I apologize as I see the light flicker on and off. I am on an older camera right now. Uh, since I get set up in my new house, which will be around Thanksgiving time, I'll have a I'll be running a high-end camera, not this cheap ten-dollar camera. But um, 
right now it's all about the content, right? Um, so I do like short books, and I do like them for a multitude of reasons, primarily that I get to explore new things and uh, expand it on my uh, repertoire a little bit and have more buy buttons out there and test new things like new book covers and new book, new ways to write my book description because for me it comes down to am I making a living doing what I'm doing? Well, yeah, I am and I'm doing pretty well for myself but I'd like to be making more and I don't think any of us will ever be fully, no matter how much we earn, we'll never be fully happy with how much we earn. We always want to make more and I am that way. And my wife has one of those, my ex-wife actually, uh, has one of those full-time jobs. And I dwarf her income. Uh, there's no way she can make as much as what I make online uh, doing my writing thing. So I do a lot of writing and I probably write, honestly, on a slow week when I'm in a screw-off mode, I probably write 10,000 words a week. On one of my really productive weeks, I can put out 40,000 words, no problem. And it really, when it comes down to the writing, now with the books, books and articles, now when I'm writing for an email, it, it really doesn't, I don't need that beginning, middle, end all the time. Um, but sometimes I do. And then when I'm doing a book, or I'm doing a Kindle short, or I'm doing a product, I need to have a clear opening and closing and middle, and I have to cover a lot of detail in between. And I have to um, offer a lot of different information within the context of that, and it has to make sense, and it has to be in, an enjoyable read. That's a big thing. People don't follow me because I'm a boring writer. You know, they follow me because they enjoy my writing style. And my writing style does include a lot of factual information. It does uh, offer forward a lot of great ideas and I, a lot of training. And sometimes it has a bit of humor mixed in. So my writing style is such that a lot of people really appreciate what I am able to do on the keyboard and what, what really matters to them and it always comes down to this it, it always comes down to uh, reader satisfaction okay and I wouldn't be making the kind of money I'm making online if I didn't deliver reader satisfaction okay um, I wouldn't be making that money as a writer and, and it should be noted that 98-99% of my income comes from writing um probably have to back that off to about 90% now since I do more video training now than what I used to but a couple of years ago 98-99% was sourced directly from writing and now I got video training in the mix so probably 90% of my income is derived from writing at this point in time so it's important for you to understand when I started out I sucked as a writer I really did and it took a lot of practice and a lot of reading and a lot of study for me to move from suck to good to great and some people might dispute great but nobody's going to dispute good okay I'm not going to tell you there's probably a couple people out there who are my haters I got them you know but one of the things I want you to understand is when we start out as a writer, we're not very good, generally. Nobody is born a awesome writer. We all learn it. The same with promoting our books. That's something none of us are born with, but all of us can learn. People talk about natural-born salesmen. Oh, Bill, he's a natural-born salesman. I am not a natural-born salesman. I have had to learn how to be able to sell. I didn't fall into it. And it really, when I was younger, high school, college, I was really at a great disadvantage because I was painfully shy. 
And even as a, I'm almost uh, 52 Saturday, even at 52, I'm still considerably shy. Not as bad as I once was. It's embarrassing to look back 30 years and realize how shy I was at that time. And I'm not so much anymore, but I'm still not outgoing. There's nothing about me that you can mistake for outgoing. None whatsoever. Yeah, I do a lot of training. I do a lot of video. I moderate a lot of Facebook groups. I moderate forums. It doesn't matter, you know. It it's all helps, but none of it makes the shyness go away. Okay. So, I've got that shy streak in me. And it's weird. I can go into public and I can speak from a stage, which I've done before. But then when it comes time to mingle with the crowd, I'm lost. Okay. So, that's one of my shortcomings. But fortunately, I can tell a great story. And I use stories to teach. And my stories are intriguing sometimes. But the important thing I learned when I was doing articles, and it applies to the books too, is we have to get the reader from the very opening sentence to the very end sentence without losing their attention. And it's much harder to do with a longer book than it is with a shorter book. If I've got a thousand words, I'm going to keep your attention through the entire distance of that book. If I'm doing 50,000 words, I've got about 50 opportunities to lose the reader before they get to the end of the book. So that's important for us to realize. We all have to learn how to keep the reader's focus and attention all the way through the book. And I've done reasonably well with my books as far as keeping the attention of the reader from beginning to end. And I've got a lot of great feedback on my books. People love my books. And whether I'm talking, I've got 40-page books and 70-page books and 130-page books. And I'm, when I talk page books, I haven't really done word counts on there. Uh, up to about 30,000 words, I think. But I do not use great big text so I can make, say I have more pages. I don't do that. I'm small text. Standard font, 13, 14 pixel or point. So it's, I've got a lot of information crammed into those pages. So it's important for me to convey to you that while writing the long book is probably the goal for all of us, writing a short book allows us to cut our teeth on the publishing side. It allows us to learn more quickly by allowing us to explore more possibilities. And as a fiction writer, I'm not a fiction writer, I'll, I'll be honest. I have a lot of training that will help fiction writers I'm not a fiction writer, not myself. And so, with the fiction writer, I can imagine that something like flash fiction would be awesome. It would be an excellent way to cut your teeth as a fiction writer. And I've dabbled in fiction, and I'm not going to tell you what I've written in fiction because it's embarrassing. But I've tried flash fiction. But with the nonfiction, 500 words, 1,000 words, 3,000 words, 5,000 words, 10,000 words. It doesn't matter. It's all book to me, you know. When I have a clear opening and a clear conclusion and lots of words in between, that's a book, okay? So if I, now if I put out an email, I don't consider that a book. If I put it up on Facebook, that's not a book. But if I publish it on Amazon or if I publish it in PDF format, that's a book. And I've got lots of books. I've got over a hundred of them easy. And that's just in my own name. And then when you step beyond what's in my own name, there's probably another hundred books there. And 
some of those are short, some of them are long. Uh, my longest under pen name is uh, 140 pages in Kindle. Uh, I think it's like a 28,000 word document. So I've got the potential, I've got the capability and the skill set to write long. But a lot of times I prefer to write short. And the, I, I find it fascinating when you go to, you go publish your short books on Amazon. The kind of feedback you get from readers, it, it, it's like um, the guy who is complaining about, oh, it's too short. Well, it's free. Why are you complaining? And then um, I linked, I had the balls to link to one of my other products within one of my books. It was a free book. I set up for perma-free to find new fans. And the book was like 4,000 words or something like that. It's still short read. But I linked to a product inside my free book. It's a free book. Everybody on the planet can download it for free. But because I linked to a product within the book, I should be ashamed of myself. Well, I'm not ashamed. I'll tell you right now, I'm not ashamed. And I gave you the book for free, and you're still complaining. So... I don't put, I, those kind of negative comments don't bother me. I've got really thick skin. And negative remarks on my books, not a big deal. It happens. It happens to all of us. I was listening to uh, Ann Rice last night in a video, and she said she has yet to write a novel that did not have one-star reviews where the person writing the review said it's the worst book they ever read and that she was a talentless hack as a writer. We're talking about Anne Rice. What was it? Diary of the Vampire? The one with Tom Cruise? Not a big fan of Tom Cruise, but I love the movie. So, if Anne Rice is being criticized as a talentless writer with the worst book in history, and that happens to almost every one of the books she puts out, I'm not going to get mad if somebody complains about me. In fact, I was listening to a fellow yesterday who said, if you don't, if 10% of the people who read your stuff don't hate you, your audience isn't big enough. So I'd say my audience probably isn't big enough because I haven't seen 10% of the people complaining yet. So I need to work on that, right? I need a bigger audience so more people can complain about me, right? Isn't that just funny? So anyway, sometimes, and the thing is with the short books, the goal is to always bring value to the reader. Now, not all readers are going to appreciate the value you bring to them. But enough of the readers will appreciate the value you bring that makes it all worthwhile. Because every book that I have out there that has a one-star review also has a five-star review. And every one that has a two-star review also has a four-star review. Okay? So... Different readers are going to take a book a different way. You cannot please all the people all the time. And one thing that I would like to end this with is the one thing that I think has made me such an exceptional writer over the years. And that is, when you're starting out as a writer, it's hard to do because you're, you don't have the confidence level yet. So, when you start out as a writer, you kind of stumble through the process. And then at a certain point, you're going to emulate the writers you really enjoy. And it's just part of the learning experience. But at a certain point, your confidence level will become such that 
not only do you have confidence in your own writing style, you're no longer borrowing from somebody else. You're doing your own style, and you have enough confidence in that style that uh, you begin to have your own voice. And that is where you should be working towards. It took me probably three, four hundred articles before I got to that point. And even with my books, I'm getting to that point, you know. But you, what makes you truly special in the marketplace isn't just a single book or the story you tell, but your voice. Your particular voice, the way you tell your story, that's what makes you stand out in the marketplace. And when you... Before you get your own voice, you're just an average writer. But once you get your voice, people start falling in love with you as an author. And one thing, and here's, a, here's kind of something related to that. And I do this, I, I do work with ghostwriters sometimes who write books for me. And the one conversation we have time and time again, and this is something that I need to have happen when the book is written, but most people cannot, most people who are working as a ghostwriter cannot do it. I have to go through and edit the document and put it in there. It's not something that people can do naturally. And that is a certain amount of cockiness. I tell my writers that, my ghost writers, that when you write something up for me, you need to have this just unflappable confidence, almost to the point of arrogance or cockiness, that you're absolutely right and everybody else is wrong. And it's not so much that everybody else is wrong, but more that I'm absolutely right. And I have that confidence to know that I am absolutely right. And that is what comes across a lot in my books, that I am absolutely right. I'm infallible. Of course, I am in, I'm fallible, of course. I make mistakes. But in the writing style, that's what I'm looking for. That's my voice. I'm infallible. Okay? It's a confidence that you can't have when you're brand new. But... Once you've done several books, and that's another benefit of the short books, is you can get to that confidence faster by writing short books than you can by writing long books. So getting to that confidence faster is important. And that's what I want my ghostwriters to do for me, is to demonstrate that absolute, unshakable confidence in the words they're putting on the page. And they can never do it because they're not experienced writers. And so I have to go in with the editor's pen and add that confidence to the storytelling. So that's the one thing that limits me most when I'm working with ghost writers and having work produced. Because at a certain point, the biggest challenge with working with ghost writers is that you have the idea and you present to the ghostwriter and you tell them write this story up for me and then you tell them what voice you want to portray in the story and if they don't quite get it then you spend more of your time doing editing work which slows down your own productivity because the reason you hired the ghost ghostwriter in the first place was to speed your productivity but they're slowing you down because you have to spend more time editing their work. And it actually works out, if I have to spend too much time editing their work, I just cut them loose. And I go to the next writer. But even with my good writers, my good writers don't have that unflappable, unflappable confidence that I do when I'm writing whatever it is I'm writing. That's part of my voice. And so you have to, as a writer, you have to do enough writing to take yourself from that absolute discomfort of not knowing whether you're writing well to that level where you're starting to emulate 
your favorite writers to the point where you have enough confidence in your work that your own voice starts coming out in your words. And that's what makes people successful as a writer, in my opinion, is once they reach that point where they have their own voice and people like that voice, you got made. You're there. But it takes a lot of practice to get to that point. So I'm going to go ahead and end this video. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, my name is Bill Platt, and if you would like to be on my mailing list, uh, go to the Bill Platt for authors.com. And if you like videos like this one, click on the subscribe button down below here in YouTube. Thank you very much. Have a great one.